you know, this is uh, really a fun time uh, to watch people follow the Lord in believers' baptism. But I always feel a responsibility to talk about the meaning of baptism, okay? The meaning of baptism. I, I look at it like this. Baptism is like the opportunity to, to confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Uh, baptism obviously does not save you, uh, but it is an opportunity to tell others that you're saved. It's a show openly and show publicly that you are already a believer in Jesus. You know, there are, I call them cults, like the Church of Christ, or the Christian church denomination that teach that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. That is false teaching. That's heresy. And it's, it's very clear in the scripture. For instance, in the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul tells the Corinthian believers, I'm happy that I didn't baptize any of you except that he names a few names. And then he says this, for God didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Very clearly, Paul is differentiating between the gospel and baptism. The gospel is what saves. When you believe the gospel that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died because of your sin, took your punishment on that tree, and you receive him personally as your Savior, your sins are forgiven, you're saved at that moment. And after you are saved, you want to give public testimony to that, and that's what baptism is about. That's what we're going to experience, and that's what we're going to see today, a open public testimony by each one of these people I have been saved that I am trusting Jesus as my Savior. In fact, I think there are three vital, important truths that bring out the meaning of baptism. And I want to share them with you, but I don't want to do it until we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this afternoon. Thank you for the, the, the four that are being obedient to you and they are being baptized biblically by immersion, by going into and under the water and coming up out of the water. Lord, we thank you for these, and we pray that this would be a great encouragement to them, but also that it would encourage and bless all of us who are witnessing this. We thank you for the truth that uh, baptism pictures for us and help me to communicate that truth as simply and as briefly as I can now, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The first thing that I believe that baptism really pictures for us is a believer's identity, a believer's identity. And I get that from Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, in the opening verses, talks about a person who is a believer being baptized, not in water, but being baptized in Jesus, into Jesus, being baptized spiritually. <laughs> the believer, a person that is saved, is identified with Jesus in three ways. Number one, they are identified with Jesus in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. What you see pictured in believer's baptism is an individual going into the water, going under the water, and coming up out of the water, picturing burial, death and burial, and resurrection. Okay, so water baptism pictures spirit baptism, <clears throat> spiritual baptism. It identifies that believer as one who has died with Christ, and they have died to the old person they used to be. They have died to indwelling sin. 
it pictures that they have identified with Jesus in his burial. When they go under the water, they are picturing that I am burying the old person I used to be. I'm burying the oldness of my old life. And when they come up out of the water, they're identifying themselves with Jesus's resurrection. And they're saying, I am now showing you that in Christ, I'm a new person. And I have a new life now. The old life is dead and buried. And now I am going to live in newness of life. There's a second thing. Baptism pictures not only the believer's identity with Jesus, but it also pictures the believer's loyalty to Jesus. And I say that on the basis of, of 1 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verse 21, where we read, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What he says in that verse is that baptism does not save us, but rather it is an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, believers' baptism is uh, does not produce salvation, but uh, it is a pledge of a person's loyalty to the risen Christ. You might say that baptism is an oath of loyalty to Jesus. It, ha it demonstrates that this person has already made a heart decision to follow Jesus all the way through all of their life. Like the song says, I decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. So baptism, what's the meaning of it? It uh, pictures the believer's identity with Christ, the believer's loyalty to Christ, and one third and final thing, it pictures the believer's authority in Christ, the believer's authority in Christ. And I think about that in the book of Acts chapter 2, on that day of Pentecost, when Peter is preaching that uh, powerful message, and the response by some of the Jewish listeners is, men and brethren, we're so convicted. What are we going to do? And Peter says, repent and then be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I would say this, that baptism also pictures a believer being anointed with the Holy Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit's power. Do you remember when Jesus was baptized? When Jesus came up out of the water, having been baptized by John the baptizer in the Jordan River, a, a, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove landed on his head. And it was a picture of Jesus's anointed with the Spirit for his messianic ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the prophet Isaiah says, and has uh, anointed me to preach. And so that dove landing on Jesus' head at his baptism was a picture of Jesus being anointed by the Spirit for his, uh, his messianic ministry. So I believe that water baptism pictures baptism with the Holy Spirit that will enable a believer and empower a uh, a believer to know the Spirit's anointing. You know, the Spirit's powerful anointing in our life is in three different areas. Number one, we are told in 1 John 2, 20 and 27, that the Spirit anoints every believer to illuminate or to give them understanding of the Scripture. And we are told in Ephesians 5, 18, that the Spirit of God anoints every believer that uh, that receives him to have a power to live the believing life, to be filled with the Spirit. And Jesus tells us in John 7, verses 37 to 39, that anyone that uh, comes to him and drinks 
will have the Holy Spirit living in him and out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. There will be an outflow of ministry or service for the Lord. This is all part of the authority of the anointing that uh, water baptism pictures. So, very quickly, and in summary, baptism doesn't save anyone. Baptism does not save, but it reveals three wonderful things that are true about a saved person. That that person is has an identity with Christ, that that person is uh, picturing a loyalty to Christ, and that that person now is also showing an authority that they have in Christ. That's in a nutshell. In my thinking and my understanding of the scripture, the meaning of believer's baptism. And I hope that uh, you'll think about that as these uh, people come forward and they publicly follow the Lord in what is called believer's baptism.